modern organic chemistry. He was a professor at Marburg and Leipzig. Kolbe was the first to apply the term synthesis in a chemical context, and contributed to the philosophical demise of vitalism through synthesis of the organic substance acetic acid from carbon disulfide. And also contributed to the development of structural theory. This was done via modifications to the idea of radicals and accurate prediction of the existence of secondary and tertiary alcohols, and to the emerging array of organic reactions through his Kolbe electrolysis of carboxylate salts. The Kolbe-Schmidt reaction in the preparation of aspirin in the Kolbe nitrile synthesis. After studies with Buhler and Bunsen, Kolbe was involved with the early internationalization of chemistry through work in London. He was elected to the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, and won the Royal Society of London's Davy Medal in the year of his death. Despite these accomplishments and his training important members of the next generation of chemists, including Zaitsev, Korshius, Beckman, Greyeb, Markovnikov, and others, Kolbe is best remembered for editing the journal For Practice at Chemie for more than a decade, in which his vituperative essays on Kekulé's structure of benzene, Von Hoff's theory on the origin of chirality and Bayer's reforms of nomenclature were personally critical and linguistically violent. Kolbe died of a heart attack in Leipzig at age 68, six years after the death of his wife, Charlotte. He was survived by four children. Kolbe was born in Ellihausen, near Göttingen, Kingdom of Hanover as the eldest son of a Protestant pastor. At the age of 13, he entered the Göttingen Gymnasium, residing at the home of one of the professors. He obtained the leaving certificate six years later. He had become passionate about the study of chemistry, matriculating at the University of Göttingen in the spring of 1838 in order to study with the famous chemist Friedrich Wuhler. In 1842, he became an assistant to Robert Bunsen at the Philips Universität Marburg. He took his doctoral degree in 1843 at the same university. A new opportunity arose in 1845, when he became assistant to Lyon Playfair at the New Museum of Economic Geology in London, and a close friend of Edward Franklin. From 1847, he was engaged in editing the Handwerterbuch der Rheinen und Angewandten Chemie edited by Justice von Liebig, Wuhler, and Johann Christian Pogendorf, and he also wrote an important textbook. In 1851, Colby succeeded Bunsen as professor of chemistry at Marburg and, in 1865, he was called to the Universität Leipzig. In 1864, he was elected a foreign member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. He was elected as a member of the American Philosophical Society in 1874. In 1853, he married Charlotte, the daughter of General Major Wilhelm von Bartelevin. His wife died in 1876 after 23 years of happy marriage. They had four children. As late as the 1840s, and despite Friedrich Wuhler's synthesis of urea in 1828, some chemists still believed in the doctrine of vitalism. According to which a special life force was necessary to create organic compounds. Colby promoted the idea that organic compounds could be derived from substances clearly sourced from outside this organic context, directly or indirectly, by substitution processes. Hence, while by modern definitions, he was converting one organic molecule to another, by the parlance of his era, he was converting inorganic and organic substances into organic ones only thought accessible through vital processes. He validated his theory by converting carbon disulfide to acetic acid in several steps. Colby also introduced a modified idea of structural radicals, so contributing to the development of structural theory. A dramatic success came when his theoretical prediction of the existence of secondary and tertiary alcohols was confirmed by the synthesis of the first of these classes of organic molecules. Colby was the first person to use the word synthesis in its present-day meaning, and contributed a number of new chemical reactions. In particular, Colby developed procedures for the electrolysis of the salts of fatty and other carboxylic acids and prepared salicylic acid, a building block of aspirin in a process called Colby synthesis or Colby-Schmidt reaction. His method for the synthesis of nitriles is called the Colby nitrile synthesis, and with Edward Franklin he found that nitriles can be hydrolyzed to the corresponding acids. In addition to his own bench research and scholarly and editorial work, Colby oversaw student research at Leipzig and especially at Marburg. Students spending time under his tutelage included Peter Gries, Alexander Mikhailovich Zaitsev, known for Zaitsev's rule predicting the product composition of elimination reactions, Theodor Korsius, Ernst Otto Beckmann, Karl Graeb, Oskar Lowe, Konstantin Falberg, Nikolai Menshutkin, Vladimir Markovnikov, first to describe carbocycles smaller and larger than cyclohexane, 
and known for Markovnikov's rule describing addition reactions to alkenes, Jacob Vollard, Ludwig Mond, Alexander Crum Brown, Maxwell Simpson, and Frederick Guthrie. Besides his work for periodicals he wrote numerous books Colby served for more than a decade as what, in modern terms, would be understood the senior editor of the journal for Praktische Chemie, Journal of Practical Chemistry. From 1870 to 1884, Colby was sometimes so severely critical of the work of others, especially after about 1874, that some wondered whether he might have been suffering a mental illness. He was intolerant of what he regarded as loose speculation parading as theory, and sought through his writings to save his beloved science of chemistry from what he regarded as the scourge of modern structural theory. His rejection of structural chemistry, especially the theories of the structure of benzene by August Kekulay, the theory of the asymmetric carbon atom by J. H. von et Hoff, and the reform of chemical nomenclature by Adolf von Bayer, was expressed in his vituperative articles in the journal for Praktische Chemie. Some translated quotes illustrate his manner of articulating the deep conflict between his interpretation of chemistry and that. Of the structural chemists, Bayer is an excellent experimenter, but he is only an empiricist, lacking sense and capability. And his interpretations of his experiments show particular deficiency in his familiarity with the principles of true science. The violence of his language worked to limit his posthumous reputation. Thanks for watching.